Hi, I'm Graham from Second Era of Moles, and if you clicked on this video accidentally, 90 seconds is all I ever ask. This is another week that was on Pokemon Masters X. It's uh, gearing up to the two year anniversary now, isn't it? So we've had the Champion Stadium the last week in the Unova region, we've had Lear taking the lead in the latest event, we've still got Giovanni and Mewtwo lurking in their shadows, we've had the Battle Villa reopen for this month, we've got an egg event as well, so plenty of things to be getting on with and giving us a few gems ready for that second anniversary. So let's have a look at the Champion Stadium. In round one you get the condition of permanent field effects. I chose to take on Marshall as he was weak to psychic types and that meant that I could use Bianca, Mew and Sabrina with Alakazam. The reason I chose that team was because obviously they're all psychic types and also I can use psychic terrain with that one. That's good in several different ways, one of which is that Bianca has a tile which when psychic terrain is active it restores everyone else's HP which is brilliant to have. So she's in there for that, for stored power as well. I'm using there for using Swift to reduce the enemy stats and eventually he'll become your Sync Nuka. I didn't quite get that far with Mew because I had him as the first target, I was thinking his evasiveness is going to kick in and that will mean that he won't be taking too many hits. Almost said hats there. Mew, have a lot of hats. Didn't work out like that for me uh, because he fainted, wasn't evasive enough apparently. Then you've got Alakazam and Sabrina in there to provide Reflect, that's going to last forever thanks to the condition as well. You've got six cents for healing and you can raise the crit hit rate as well. So after you've set Psychic Terrain with Bianca and Mushana, you then want to be using You Snooze You Lose. I was lucky and I got quite a few refreshes of that so I think I'm still using it a couple of rounds later. So that feeds into stored power and that then becomes a really, really devastating attack to use on the other team. I think I decided that because it was so devastating, obviously Sync moves down the middle but you take out the sides as well before they can come in with Bulldoze or Avalanche or whatever it is they were using. So take them out and then you just got to take out the centre and then they'll land a big blow right onto Marshall's green lip. So then you move on to round two where you get a special attack boost. I was kind of thinking that maybe I'd got my conditions the wrong way around because I chose to take on Shauntal next and I was thinking uh, if I want to have permanent rain there maybe I could have had that and then the special attack boost there would have fed into my psychic types against Marshall but it's much of a muchness really. So as I said I chose to take on Shauntal, she was weak to water types so I went with Kyogre uh, May and Swampert, and then Phoebe and Duskmar as my third member of my team. So this one I started off using Origin Pulse as my first move because I was thinking get there in with that attack, get the move bar going. Then May comes in with a ready for this that's going to refresh it a bit and she also gets a special attack boost from it. Phoebe's going to be using uh, Direct Hit All to raise that crit hit rate. Then on the next round it's open the oceans with Kyogre to get those stat boosts. Uh, then, Phoebe's then May is going to be using Muddy Water as an attack. If you've got bars you can maybe do a Shadow Punch in there and uh, save your direct hit all for another time. Um, Phoebe is going to get burned at some point in this round, that's one of Shauntal's attacks is either straight out burn or as a secondary effect. So later in the battle she's not really going to be doing much in terms of attacking. And then you can either use a special attack boost or another origin pulse with Kyogre. Depending on how much move bar you've got you can use a mud muddy water or a ready for this and then another trainer move with Phoebe. That should put you onto your sync move. I was choosing to go with Kyogre for this one. I thought he is a striker by trade, so that'll hit harder, but maybe May would have done more damage with that rain boost. 
because you're using moves that hit everyone, um, the sides aren't going to do too much damage to you, it's the middle you've got to worry about. With this team, it's important to clear it before Shauntal gets her sync move, because it is going to wipe out this team. So you've really got to be smart in getting down to that sync move. You're going to be maybe relying on some move gauge refreshes, or on Phoebe with Unbreakable Bonds to make sure that you can use an Orange Impulse and also a Muddy Water in the same turn. But if you can do it like that, then you should have no trouble rolling across those waves and uh, bringing them into Shauntal. Round 3 brings with it the condition the status conditions last longer, more likely to take effect and do more damage. This one was the most difficult round of the week for me because there weren't really any type weaknesses that fed into using status conditions, so not water types, not psychic types, um, not dark types and steel types. None of them really go well with like trap or poison or I mean maybe sleep, but it definitely was the most challenging round of the week for me trying to use dark types. I thought maybe I could go in with a bit of a flinch team, so originally I had Eevee, Kakui and Karen and Houndoom. Then I read the description and it's like, oh, Caitlyn again has stupidly high special defense. So I tried bringing in Umbreon to go with that and that wasn't working. And I, I feel like eventually I would have got it out, but I couldn't be bothered sitting there and trying and failing and trialing and failing, trying and failing when I could just go in with a with an off type uh, team and win the round. I, ch I generally try not to go off type too much because I kind of feel like well you gotta respect the conditions and the weaknesses but this this time I did. So poison stall or poison trap are valid strategies for that you're looking at maybe using a Koga I started off with uh, Venusaur, but Venusaur is weak to Psychic types, so not sure how much mileage you'll get out of that one. But eventually I went all out with a physical attacking team of Olivia and Lycanroc, Kakui and his Lycanroc, and Xerneas and uh, Professor Sycamore. And the reason I went with the good Professor is because you get his sync move first, you get not only a speed boost, but a special defense move moves boost. That's going to help you when uh, Caitlyn uses her moves, obviously Psychic's mainly using special attacks there. And then with your other two, you're using Acceleroc to get some flinching in there, you're using Leer to lower that opposing team's defense. And then Karen and, uh, sorry, Olivia and Lycanroc are coming in with big Stone Edge, bigger Sync moves and just hopefully crumbling rocks over everyone on the opposition team. Round 4 is the last member of the Elite 4. I was left with Grimsley here. The condition for this round is a move gauge boost. Grimsley was weak to steel types this week, so I went with a team of Gloria and Zacian, Jasmine and Steelix, and then Liza and Lunatone in there as well. So the boost to the move gauge refill really helps with Gloria because she's got Behemoth Blade, that's a 4 bar move, so if it's refilling more quickly she's using that more often. Jasmine is in there as a 6x support and also because her sync move does lots of other things, uh, HP refresh for her and move bar refresh as well. Liza's in there to raise special defense and the attacking stats as well. So when Jasmine's used her sync move, Gloria gets the rest of them. It's Behemoth Blade all the way through, unless your move bar is really low and then you can use one of her refreshes. I tried to save Laser Sharp Focus for the last move before a sync move. That's going to guarantee that your sync move is going to be a critical hit, so it's going to do a lot more damage to the opposing team. And honestly, bar usage shouldn't be a problem in this one. You've got Jasmine's sync move that can refresh it, you've got Clang that can refresh it as well. Gloria has a trainer move that can refresh it if you need it. So yeah, you should just be able to roll over whatever Grimsley's trying to do. 
on to the champion rounds, and this week it's up against Iris yet again. Her permanent condition is a special attack reduction. I chose the optional condition from round one of permanent field effects, and that's because the team I was going with was Palkia, Eevee, and Cygnusu Blue, and Blastoise. Mainly to use to the top to get that permanent move bar increase, and it comes with a crit hit rate boost as well. So I'd wanted to use EV against Caitlyn for flinching and for her um, stats boost from her sync move because I was like, eh, Houndoom doesn't really hit that hard on sync move. But I thought, you know what, you tried hard, so you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame this week. So she's using Tackle for flinch. Also, Palkia's sync move isn't necessarily the strongest, so I thought, well, you know, his other damages from his attacks, so why not get in there with those stats boosts? But Blue obviously gets the first sync move, as that's going to give you that team safety net and team endurance. Palkia is just using that spatial rend to uh, get through the other team. I took out the sides first and then the middle because I thought that was going to be a good strategy. If you're using Water Pulse with Blue, that's also going to raise everyone's special defense, so that's that's useful to have. Uh, Eevee's also got a move bar boost and potions, as well as her flinching and stats boost from her sync moves. So like I said last week, she's going to be very useful for your team. Palki is very reliant on getting critical hits, which is why to the top is very useful because, as I said, move bar usage increase, but it also gives you a crit hit raise boost. And that sort of snowballs for Palkia. Once it gets one, it keeps topping up and topping up. So it keeps hitting harder and harder and rending the spatials as they were. So there you have it, 7,500 points for the last week in Unova. Next week, we're moving on to the Kanto region. I won't be doing a video for it. As I said last week, I'm on holiday next week. I won't get the opportunity to record in time so we'll be back for Johto uh, for Kanto week two sorry so yeah just just hold hold on till then the newest event is Lear takes the lead uh, Lizia gets I don't know lost somehow because of Hooper in the middle of a concert and that means that Lear has to do some stuff and uh, get her back to the concert. So this is a good opportunity when you unlock Sawyer to level him up from because he gets a 1.6 boost to any of the rewards. I thought that the daily battle challenge was quite difficult for this one, especially before I got Sawyer and leveled him up because you know Charon doesn't do a whole lot, and then I was left with. Uh, the player and Pikachu and Lizia and Altaria. And it wasn't until I started using Altaria as sort of my main striker, because once she sinks, it's Mega Altaria and she has Dragon Pulse instead, and that's a three bar move and it hits a lot harder than just using Twister or Thunderbolt from Pikachu. So that was a big breakthrough for me. And then, of course, I regridded her so that her Dragon Pulse was even stronger, and it sort of rolled on from there. For the battle challenge, uh, it's weak to Psychic and Dark types. There's the optional challenge of using two uh, sync pairs that have the sunglasses theme. So I found that one quite difficult as well. So the team I chose for the sunglasses challenge was Lieutenant Surge and Electrode, Serena and Delphox and Bianca and Mushana. So it's a psychic weak stage, so Bianca comes in as your main striker. She's got that psychic terrain, as I mentioned earlier. She's got that healing, she's got that store power, she's got that you snooze, you lose, all things which are going to be very useful for outputting huge damage. Uh, Serena is using hypnosis as much as possible to put everyone to sleep, and it kind of hinges on those two working well together. Surge is in there for Eerie Impulse, which is going to lower the special attack by two stats points each time, which is very useful. So if you use Hypnosis early, 
and you uh, manage to get a move ahead that allows you to reset psychic terrain before your sync move because you'll have an extra round of moves to get in there before that sync move that's very useful for Bianca to have as it makes that sync move hit a lot harder and of course you can start using a fire spin in there that's useful to get trapped on the two sides because then if you get hit with a move that wipes all of your teams uh, your main striker Bianca out or you get hit with a sync move and it takes one of them out then when the sides start attacking for their damage they're also going to be taking trap damage and it will help them go down a lot quicker. So we've had the final chapter of the main story come and you know you get to win the BML Championships and it's like yay we won and I'm sitting there like yay is there a trophy? What, what, what have I actually won? You know, do I get a, a trophy? Is it like a, a scepter? Is it like a crown? Like, like, do I get to be king instead of Lear? But yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good ending. Sets it up for another season, so we'll see how long that takes to complete. There's a new egg event landed. This time it's for flying types and psychic types. So... It's a, it's a low effort thing and you get fairly decent rewards from it, so just keep plugging away with it. The Battle Villa has now reopened for the month, so that means that we've got 30 more halls to battle through. Um, I don't know why, I, I occasionally feel like it's a bit of a chore, I'm like, I could do it and then what if it faints? So I'm going to try and use more variety in my sync pairs this time rather than just relying on the old faithfuls. And as always, remember that you get to do two daily battles to get more rewards, more lucky cookies. So don't forget about those. So thanks for joining me for the week that was. You'll have to go on with the week that will be without me, unfortunately. Hopefully there'll be lots of anniversary events landing and lots of gems coming everyone's way and lots of new things to use our stamina on. But I hope you have a great couple of weeks before I'm back with my next video. Uh, in that time, if there's anything you'd like to suggest in terms of changes to this format or anything to make it better, please let me know. You're well past the 90 second mark at this point, so congratulations on that. Hopefully you'll take it a bit further, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter. But that's all up to you. Thank you very much for this, for watching this video, and goodbye.